Rod the Train, Hug a Friend. Uh, it's time to celebrate the life of Mr. David Murray Brockett. Christopher Maynard Bubbs, and about 30 years ago, when Dave and I were hanging out, we kicked in the back door of the National <laughs> as we were uh, expanding our minds. <laughs> and uh, we were amazed that this great, glorious city uh, had left such a <coughs> treasure to rot. And never in my wildest imagination did I think that 30 years later I would be here talking about my dear friend. And it is my un, un, evident in my task that I, I, I'm so honored to have known him. And I debated for the last week trying to do this man justice who meant so much to all of us. I mean, how do you define David Brock? <laughs> There's a million definitions, and all of them are true. And as sure as I am that all of us can relate, in the parade of memories and emotions that have engulfed us since his passing, he lived a life worthy of a million stories. Not all of them can and should be told today. <laughs> because it would be a four-day memorial. And we still wouldn't get to them all, but the one thing that binds them all together is that all of them are true. <laughs> there is not a single word in the fucking English language that does not accurately describe Dave Brocky, and at the same time is frankly incapable of conveying the true meaning and depth of who he was. Having thought about him 
and who he was this past week, I keep coming back to one thing. <laughs> Dave Brocky. David Murray Brocky was a human being. And what a gloriously wonderful, bouncing ball of bright light that motherfucker was. Oh my God, he was like, when he was excited, he was bursting. Just, oh! You couldn't help but be sort of like high off of him. Oh my God! Yes, Dave, let's kill everything! Yes! I'm behind you when I present to fucking kill it all! <laughs> and my friend, David Broccoli. Broccoli. <laughs> And nobody I have known has embodied what it means to be a human being more than him. Every emotion, every inspiration, every passion, he milked to its full zenith. With every fiber of being, he lived. Knowing him made me want to be a better person. Knowing him... <laughs> And through him, I learned that life is first and foremost a participation <laughs> sport. I learned to always question authority. I learned the meaning of active engagement, commitment, and work. I learned to grab life by its big, <coughs> nasty, syphilitic cock and suck that motherfucker until it gave me what I wanted! With his heart on his sleeve, he let his emotions flow through him without restriction. Sometimes those emotions took him to strange, uncharted territory that even himself was incapable of understanding. But no matter how cruel and insensitive he could be, you always knew that was his fucked up way of proving that he cared about you. And you never had to doubt if he cared. And that was a big part of who Dave was. Sometimes, sometimes, you had to do battle with him. I engaged in so many battles and useless squabbles with him. But if you're a friend with Dave, that's what he wanted from you. He wanted conflict. Inspire me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. He wanted stuff from you. And the great thing about Dave, it was never a dull moment. Because you never knew which Dave you were going to get. Could it be the Dave, the tender, compassionate patron of all that's good and decent? Or could he be evil Dave? The Dave that broke you down in a couple of words just to give him some mild amusement. But no matter what Dave I got, I loved all of them equally. I loved them all because they were all infinitely fascinating, intelligent, hilarious, and real. It's been said that you can judge a man by the lives he touched. And in this case, and in this Motley crew, 
he lived life well. I am honored, humbled, and eternally grateful to call many of you my friends. Looking around this room, Dave will never die because I see him in all of you as I hope you see him in me. Two of my war brothers, Scott Crawl, Michael Bishop, Bobby Gorman, you know who you are, Don Dracovich. I am so honored to be mentioned in your presence or that you allow me to memorialize Dave. It really is an unbelievable honor. And I'm amazed by your collective and individual compliments. In fact, I don't think there's a person in this room that doesn't take a measure of pride in what you've achieved over the last three decades. When someone finds out that I, yes, am the original ball sack. <laughs> Which I never thought would be my fate. I was supposed to be a great artist that was playing music, you know, hey man, I want to be serious. I'm serious about my like, shit. Now, what do they know me for? They would love this as a bit player in the story of David Brock. Just as they told me, I would end up. <laughs> but I'm always quick to tell them that the band only got better after I left and I had precious, precious little to do with the success they achieved. And to know you guys is truly an honor and you will forever have my unyielding dedication, loyalty and respect and my life has only been made better by knowing you guys. Thank you so much. And as the days, weeks, months, years pass, and we all go back to our lives, and we don't have that loud beacon of all things cheering us, condemning us, the thing I think is most important to take from this, from his passing, is that we should never forget that our best days are in front of us. I know that sounds like bullshit. It doesn't. It sounds like my best days are in front of us. My life sucks. But it is true. I don't even believe it, but I tell myself that. <laughs> I tell myself that because I knew Dave Brock. Sure, he could be morose, he could be many things, but the one thing he wasn't, he was not a fucking quitter. And I deal with so many <laughs> fucking lame-ass dickheads. Well, we only get a half, we only get half price beer today. Let me set up my chart here, and I think about the, just the passion and dedication that he possessed and instilled in me to, to do things. <laughs> I should just masturbate, but then my wife said. <laughs> but it is true. The best dicks are in front of us. And it'll be hard to comprehend as the memories fade, life gets complicated. But as sad as and distraught as we are today, we need to take from his life his unbelievable zest for living and to apply it to our own lives and make this world a more interesting place to live in. And that's what he did, he did like a saint. He was a patron saint to all of you, all the people I know, the band, you know me. I heard him love all of you. So here's to you, Dave. Thank you for making my and all of our lives more interesting, funny, and enjoyable. Thank you for your amazing work, your insatiable But most of all, thank you, David Rocky, for being my friend. I can't tell you how much I agonized over this. And in
in the parade of memories that is David Brockie. We call to the stage now, Mr. Michael Bishop. What's, what's Michael Bishop? Yeah. 